my name is Malia from Plato to Plato and the STEM Laboratory, and today we are going to geek out on STEM bins. I'll be sharing my favorite tips and tricks for setting up STEM centers that are engaging, fun, and manageable, and I'll also be passing along a lot of freebies that I hope will help you get started right away. Let's begin with a quick STEM 101. STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math. As our students grow older and enter the work field, they really need to have not only an understanding of STEM skills, but also a love for it, because it's very likely that STEM will be part of their profession. So why STEM bins? There are a lot of times throughout our day where we aren't able to sit down one-on-one -on -one with students to either review a concept that we've talked about earlier in the day or to stretch in activities that those kids that really need a challenge are able to get that as well. And STEM bins offer a really easy solution. Set them up once and then you reap the benefits of it forever as long as you use that STEM bin. Let's talk about the logistics of setting up the dream STEM, STEM bin that's going to work for your classroom. So a couple of tips. First, I like to use the snap top lids. Um, these are great because when, especially with young kids, you know sometimes they put the lid on, it doesn't quite click, they drop the box and you have supplies all over the floor. So that's no good. We don't want that. We want this to be easy and effective in your classroom, not a distraction. So these snap top lids are great because once they click, then they can shake around, fall on the floor, everything's going to stay in place. Now I am very type A and I like everything to be matchy matchy. So I um, like to add a one of these stickers, these sticker labels on the front. I grabbed these at Target during back to school season. Sometimes I've seen them at the dollar store and I know you can grab them on Amazon as well. Um, so I print off labels for each of the different STEM activities and then I slide them right in here. Once the STEM bin has been out for you know, a certain amount of time, when I feel like the kids are ready to move on to something else, I simply, simply slide this label out and then put a new one inside. Now this comes to our first freebie. I love having labels that match and I have been known to write a label once and then write it again if my handwriting didn't quite match the set. So um, because I'm kind of crazy that way, I am passing along a set of editable labels for you in two different sizes so that you can type in your different labels and then print them out on paper if you want to do that as well. Now here's another tip. I like color coding my, um, my stem bins. So this is my pink bin, it's toothpick structures. And I also have a yellow making five bin and a green craft stick puzzle bin. Um, the reason I like to color code these is because it gives me an opportunity to keep track of the kids who have actually gone to that center. Because sometimes that can be hard to, um, to just keep track of. So inside each of the bins, there is a checklist right here. This is my next freebie for you guys. So I am giving you guys an editable copy of this checklist. You can type in the name of your, um, your, your STEM bin right here and then just write in your students' names. Every time they open up the box and they get started, they just can initial with their initials right here or they can put the date if you wanna actually track when they're coming to the center. That way you can easily look down this list and see, oh, student eight, he hasn't actually visited this STEM center before. So I'm gonna have them, I'm gonna pull them and make sure that they get to this pink center um, quickly. So once you have the checklist inside, um, that's when I, I include all of my different materials. So I include any of the record sheets right on top um, and I paper clip them obviously. That's one of the reasons I love this bin actually is that this eight and a half by 11 page fits so nicely inside and it doesn't crumple and get bent. Um, so I put that in there. And then I, if there are any cards um, that are included or activity cards that are included in my STEM bin, I like to hole punch them in the corner and then put them on a ring just to keep them all together. Sometimes I've used rubber bands in the past and they'll either crumple the cards or they just won't make it back um, to the rubber band. So if I keep them on this clip, then kids can easily just go through and um, go from one card to the next. And then any other supplies that I need the kids to have in here are also already put inside. Now sometimes 
I need kids to have a specific number of manipulatives. So let me give you an example of that. This is my making five stem bin. And for this center, I want kids to practice breaking the number five into different parts. So again, you open up the top. I have my record sheets inside. And then I have a individual tubs for each of the kids. So you can see I have um, four different tubs in here. Because I'm working on making five, each of these tubs has five of these counters inside. So it's because I wanted them to have a specific number, I already counted them out for them so that they wouldn't have to search through a big tub of supplies and find just five of them. I want it to be quick and easy and ready to go. So what do I like to put inside the stem bins? It depends a little bit on what we are learning about. So for example, with the making five, um, activity that I was talking about. If my kids are working on decomposing numbers and breaking numbers into parts, then I certainly would put uh, a, have a stem bin that is working on that number decomposition. If we're working on money and counting up change, then I would have a counting change stem bin. And then there are the activities that I like to include year-round. They stretch problem solving, they work on teamwork, um, they might be building some other skill that I really want to stretch throughout the year. So for example, I have toothpick structures, toothpick and marshmallow structures, so the kids can um, put toothpicks together and then bind them with either marshmallows or Play-Doh, depending on um, what I have available. Um, and then I also have some famous landmark cards. I like to keep these with our Lego set, so one of the bins just has a big pile of Legos inside, and the kids are challenged to build different um, famous landmarks from around the world. And I also have some Lego challenge cards. I, you can tell I love Legos just because they really give kids the chance to design projects and then obviously build them. They, it's great for testing theories and seeing if your design will actually work out the way that you think it's going to. Um, so I'm actually including a set of the free Lego challenge cards in the download that's available below this uh, video because I want you to be able to print them off, cut them apart, and then stick them in a bin just like this one um, along with a big pile of Legos and have kids read one card at a time and then build it to start their STEM exploration. I'd love to follow along with your STEM journey on Instagram, so please tag me at Play-Doh2, that's the number two, Play-Doh. Stay inspired!